Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning. It is the Earth Master here on this finally Friday, April 21st, 2023. It's about 9.17 a.m. here along the West Coast in the state of California, where it's supposed to be about 85 degrees today, one of our warmest days of the year so far. Uh, looking at the last 24 hours of earthquake activity here on the globe, shows a 1.5, the latest quake up into the Alaska area, somewhere underneath that flag of... Uh, clutter up there in the green flag. That's the latest earthquake there on the map. All the current seismograph stations there looking uh, fairly calm. Not seeing any uh, earthquake activity ramping up currently as we speak, but we did have some movement kick up over the last 24 hours here, uh, including some movement around the Papua New Guinea area uh, where they seen a 5.2 early this morning, 54 kilometers deep. Uh, also some activity here into the Indonesia region around the uh, northern section of the Maluka Sea, a 5.9 coming in about 3 o'clock this morning. That has since been followed up by some smaller aftershock activity. This earthquake originally coming in as a 6.1, so uh, quite the downgrade there. Uh, we are noticing a halt of earthquake activity right at this point. Notice that there's a line, kind of like a blockage here, uh, preventing this momentum, so to speak, around the plate boundary. Uh, and that uh, could be spelling some trouble out here. We'll watch for some larger scale movement pushing its way uh, through the Java Trench. Uh, but until then, I think we need to watch for back building activity like we're seeing over the last 12 hours uh, around the Papua New Guinea and the Maluka Sea area. Also, we're noticing some movement here around the Mariana Trench up north uh, into the east. A little bit of shallow earthquake activity near Guam. A 4.6 coming in about 6 o'clock this morning. And uh, even a little bit of activity here off the coast of Japan, just after midnight, a 4.5 coming into the area, uh, up into the Sea of Osk area. Looks like this earthquake uh, coming in last night, 4.1. Was unable to get to the update last night. I apologize. I had a pretty busy day yesterday of, of uh, some weed eating and, and mowing the field out back. So I, I got uh, swamped and man, I passed out pretty early last night. Around the uh, Samoa area, Tonga region, getting a swarm of earthquake activity as well. A couple of these from yesterday. The latest one shows a uh, fairly deep 4.5, 361 kilometers there into the Tonga Trench. Also, New Zealand has been ramping up a little bit as expected. Uh, they are showing a 3.3 on the map and also a 4.0 uh, from yesterday. But we've definitely seen a little bit more earthquake activity out there. Uh, than what's being reported there on the USGS map. Actually, a pretty good amount of earthquake activity around the Christchurch area. South Island region, uh, seen uh, quite a bit of uh, earthquake activity. Seen some fours in there as well. Um, a look at specifically around the Christchurch area. Uh, I know we had some fours from yesterday kicking in there. 4.4. Uh, .4. Coming in uh, April 21st, 7.37 their time. So that was... Uh, uh, I believe they're in the future. So that was from yesterday. A couple other smaller quakes in there as well. Let me check out the drums, get a little bit better perspective here of what's going on around the Christchurch area that will be showing up here. Uh, more specifically around, kind of looks like one of these stations right here, uh, possibly. There's some of those fours and some threes from yesterday showing up. Uh, this looks like a better graph. As you can see, here's that 4.4, some other smaller quakes, even one it looks like about 12 hours or so ago. Uh, but generally speaking, over the past eight hours, things have kind of tapered off. Uh, but we did notice that little slight uptick there across New Zealand uh, yesterday as expected. That was mentioned in the update video yesterday morning. But I think we're, um, I think we still need to be on guard out here across New Zealand, uh, the way this is set up here. We're also noticing some activity out way out here along the plate boundary. It may seem far away from New Zealand, obviously, but the general plate movement out here uh, in the direction of some of these divergent boundaries out here in the fracture zones tend to put uh, the uh, Australia plate here into momentum. Let me show you guys here. Uh, notice this divergent boundary down here. That's a separation of seafloor fracture zone where we're seeing some earthquake activity. Um, but overall, this whole region here is on the move. Uh, and that, of course, includes New Zealand down here along the plate boundary. So we'll watch that for some uh, potential further activity, more so than what we've seen yesterday. Down here into the, uh, oh goodness, 
Uh, well, Amsterdam Fracture Zone. Not for sure how to pronounce that, but hey, it's a fracture zone out there. Um, looks like a 5.7 coming in just about 2 o'clock this morning. And uh, that should, as noted, or just mentioned a minute ago, should add further strain here around the area of the Australia plate. We'll definitely keep an eye on it and uh, see how things progress today. Uh, let me look here at the Earthquake 3D globe, see what else we have across the area. 5.7, again, that halted right here across the Java Trench. 5.2, got another 4.5, it looks like, coming in right now to the Taiwan area. Notice that red flag coming in. Not being listed up here yet on the map. That's a 4.5 from earlier. Uh, but yeah, definitely a 4.5 at 105 kilometers. You can see it just northeast here of of uh, Taiwan so things definitely ramping up back building quite a bit uh, and back building meaning that uh, well right here this invisible wall preventing the momentum so to speak around the Java Trench we'll definitely keep that in mind today as we uh, enjoy this beautiful day up into the Alaska area uh, a few earthquakes in the last hour uh, mostly across the uh, typical regions here's a 2.5 map and above it doesn't really show too much activity uh, so just for now, some microquakes up there. Into the Big Island of Hawaii. Still looking at a little activity around the Kilauea Volcano. I don't think we've noticed uh, any major uptick. Just continual uh, small microquake activity down there about three kilometers below the surface. And the latest um, hazard notification system for the Kilauea Volcano. Let's see. Uh, we got a status report from yesterday uh let's see here kilauea volcano is not erupting hvo monitoring shows pulses of elevated rates of earthquake activity beneath the summit region uh, small flurries of earthquakes have occurred irregularly beneath the crater and along the southern end of the caldera since the early morning hours of april 16th that's what we're talking about the uh, earthquake swarm uh, it was accompanied by some minor ground inflation, uh, but since then, deformation rates have been relatively low across the summit. It is possible. See, they even mentioned that here, and I've been saying that in the past few, few updates. It is possible that an intrusion of magma beneath the surface of, of uh, beneath the surface or eruption of lava on the surface may occur at Kilauea Summit with little or no, or no warning. So, looks like HVO will be returning to daily updates of Kilauea Volcano, reflecting the elevated level of, of unrest. So, now we're at, uh, looks like we're still at advisory in yellow. No change to the um, volcano status, but it looks like they're going back to daily updates due to this elevated seismic activity, which I've been saying, I believe, is magma on the move there at the Kilauea Volcano. And that's obvious due to the earthquakes occurring at a certain depth there below, strictly below the uh, volcano region there at Kilauea Volcano. So we'll watch that, see how this plays out. Again, they're definitely seeing some earthquake activity uh, here at the Kilauea Crater area. The last seven days of activity will show that earthquake swarm. About 91 earthquakes, and most of them, if not all of them, are down there, uh, typically where we see magma uh, intrusion going on there in, into the uh, magma chambers and whatnot. So, yeah, just heads up. We'll see how this plays out. All right, uh, looking at the west coast here, California. A little bit of movement here across the northern California area, including uh, one earthquake from yesterday. Well, this is actually just after midnight, 1.8 17 kilometers deep and because we forgot to check I, well uh, didn't do an update last night so uh, the tremor activity did not get noted uh, by the way tremor activity is still elevated here along the cascadia 467 epicenters of tremor uh, continuing there across the area and this all began um, on the fourth of this month we can do a total tally here of what we've picked up so far and i'm sure this will continue for a little bit um <clears throat> not for sure how many days, but um, 7,174 epicenters of tremor since this uh, tremor uptick began earlier this month. So quite a bit of tremor activity, but this is all 
very typical because we do see uh, these trimmer events pop up on regular intervals. We had a, a pretty good gap here of low seismic trimmer over the past, uh, oh, the last one was back in uh, September or October of last year when it was elevated. But over the winter time, it's pretty uh, fairly minimal activity. So now we're kicking back up. We'll see if this is going to top out here at some of these higher uh, levels as we've seen in the past. We'll definitely keep an eye on that. All right, uh, so not a whole lot going on as far as earthquake activity through the Pacific Northwest. A little bit of movement here into the California area today, including a 3.2 near the Hollister area. That is right smack dab on the Calaveras Fault Zone, that earthquake. And that uh, looks like 3.3 kilometers deep. Uh, further down south, a little spotty activity across the San Andreas Fault. And uh, about the same as we look down into Southern California with some small microquake activity occurring. Nothing below or nothing above 2.5 into the southern portion of the state for now. Up into Yellowstone and uh, the rest of the area here. Doesn't look like too much activity kicking up. Uh, let's double check here the Yellowstone overviews. As we look at uh, earthquake activity, by the way, the folks, the uh, stream did go down early this morning, surprisingly. A little fishy, little fishy stuff going on here on this end once again. It never fails, but the stream is coming back up here soon after I do a couple resets and a couple adjustments. Uh, we'll get that live stream, earthquake live stream coming back up here soon. Nothing going on here across Yellowstone National Park. Things uh, very quiet as far as seismic activity goes. Uh, further to the east here in South Oklahoma, a little spotty activity from yesterday and today. Uh, and also we're seeing some movement here around the Tennessee area, 2.5 and a 2.1 uh, over the last 24 hours. Up against the, um, well, just north of the Great Smoky Mountains area in the Tennessee area, Oakdale, Tennessee to be exact, it looks like. A little spotty movement going on there today and yesterday. Across the uh, Caribbean area, looks like some movement from uh, early this morning, a 4.4 in the Dominican Republic area. Also some scattered activity as well in the, in the uh, microquake department near Puerto Rico. Look at the EMSC model here, showing some movement, uh, some fours kicking off here along the Middle America Trench. One of them being reported here by the USGS just after midnight off the coast here of San Salvador, El Salvador region. South America area. Um, we did have this 4.7 coming in here yesterday, um, last night. Uh, since then, we've seen a little bit of elevated movement towards the trench, as expected. With a couple twos kicking off here um, into the area of the Peru Chile region. Uh, but definitely a slight uptick for sure along this area of the plates. What else is there, folks? Here's that earthquake. Uh, USGS reporting that. Earthquake that was just coming in on the globe is a 4.5, 110 kilometers deep. Uh, so activity still back building here across the area of the Pacific Plate and the uh, the uh, Philippine Plate. Uh, well, that would include the Eurasia Plate as well, being right there along that plate boundary uh, along the Japan area south towards Taiwan. Quite a bit of uh, stress building up there in that area today. All right, uh, looking at the space weather activity, well, pretty calm. Notice that threshold here going down below the sea level. Not the sea level, but the sea flare level, I should say. Uh, not seeing a whole lot of flaring activity at all currently taking place. A look at the magnetic structure of all of these sunspots. Well, goodness, there's not a whole lot. Uh, I mean, there's a whole lot of sunspots, but there's not a whole lot of complex, unstable sunspots here on the on the Earth-facing side of the sun. Uh, although I think we uh, can say that there's a new region popping up here on the southeastern limb of the sun that does look somewhat promising. We'll watch that, though, see how it uh, progresses, because a lot of times we'll see these sunspots look pretty awesome, fairly awesome in terms of the... Uh, magnetic structures that they may hold that would produce some major flaring and then they kind of quietly dissipate as they turn towards the earth it's almost like uh they're being watched all right uh so overall threat right now 99 percent chance for a c flare m flare at 35 percent chance x flare at one percent chance so uh, i think if any noteworthy 
flare region or a sunspot region were to be pinpointed, it'd be the one on the southeastern limb, the newer sunspot. Uh, no major aurora forecast right now. Looks like a little unsettled conditions here across the unlit side of the earth. Uh, looking at today's storm prediction center here, uh, shows some minimal activity. Most of the enhanced, well, slight area of severe weather is in extreme southern Texas, Brownsville area, uh, way down there, with uh, only a slight chance here of some severe weather across a, a large portion of the eastern uh, states. Tornado potential only looks like about 2% there across portions of uh, Louisiana and Mississippi. Main threat today, I guess, is going to be some wind and maybe some hail. But uh, overall, severe weather threat is minimal uh, for today's forecast, which is good news. All right, folks, have a good one. Again, a live stream will be coming up here shortly. We'll get that taken care of after a few resets and whatnot. But uh, yeah, we'll be on. We'll be back on here for a little bit um, with the live stream. Take care. Have a beautiful Friday.